Like, well, good memories of New Year's with you and a fat cat. Oh, yeah, well, well how old were we, 20? Or was that, were you at uni then or not, mate? Maybe, maybe when I started uni. I think it was when we were at um, Peveril. Yeah, well, maybe last was, last year of Peveril. Probably maybe the first year of uni, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I tell you a story about uni? Yeah. I remember, because um, obviously I got absolutely pissed for about four years, um, and I remember in, in Sheffield, Hallam, uh, in one of the halls of residence once, um, I was getting absolutely hammered and uh, I sat down. I think I've been drinking like that 2020, you know, that fruit stuff. I uh, basically yeah. just absolutely blasted. And um, yeah, so it's weird telling you this actually, but um, I was sat down and my friends were saying, uh, what's up? You know, why are you crying? And I was sort of like crying. Um, and I was just saying, oh, so, so I haven't seen my uh, best mate, Alex, for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite sad. Like I say, I feel really bad that I caught in touch, kept in touch with you. Yeah, I don't really know what to say. It's like, yeah, I guess you just grow apart, don't you? I feel the same way. I was, I was, I happened to be in Holland a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I met up with Greg and Rich, who you, who you met, right? Like, we went out with them a couple of times. Yeah. And I barely see them anymore, like, because Greg's got a child. He's got a second one on the way. Rich is about to have a child. Um, they live in Holland. Like, we see each other once or twice a year, and we went out, got absolutely wasted. Got what, sorry? Like, the first time in year. And I've never missed in this, and, like, seeing you guys, it's quite good. Yeah. What do you think it is, though? Because, I mean, for, for, can you hear me all right, Alex? Yeah. 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 I mean, for me, I find that, I was mentioning this, I think, when I was speaking to Simon, the interview a, a week or two ago, that... As the weeks ticked by and the months ticked by, I mean, obviously at university, it's kind of like you're living a separate life um, to an extent, I suppose. But as time, I don't, actually, I don't know about that statement, what I'm saying there, but the point is, as the weeks and months ticked by, I kind of think I found it harder and harder to pick up the phone and, for example, call yourself or call old school friends or people like that. So it's mainly yourself, actually. I know we did... You came down to Verwood a bit, and we had one or two drinks down there a couple of times. And obviously, I saw you at your wedding, which was, well, you know, so went to your wedding, which was great. But Is that the last time we saw each other? Yeah, 2007. Oh. Yeah. Um, fucking ages ago. Um, but I just found it harder and harder to pick up the phone and call you, for example, because I'd think, shit, what have I got to say? And maybe there was a part of me where I was thinking, well, my life's going a bit fucking shit at the moment. So, you know, maybe I haven't got a lot to, to talk about, you know. But what 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 was it for you? That's not true. Like, I don't know. I think I don't think that's a real excuse for you not picking up the phone or me not picking up the phone or whatever. And you know, I've got so my university friends. They're in all sorts of different situations, and we manage to. It's not easy, but we do see each other at least a couple of times a year, if not more. I don't know what it is. Like my school friends, like so you, Ed and Jason, I basically have lost touch with. Right. And you were my three best friends at school. And yeah, it's not it's not very good. I mean, I, like I say, my life is hectic, right? I've got three kids, I've got a dog, I've got a full time job. I travel a lot with work. It's it's kind of full on. Yeah. <clears throat> it's it's. Um, I mean, in many ways, I mean, this this phone calls, you know, obviously, like the, the conversations I've had with other people, it's almost like worthwhile. You know, it's, it's more than worthwhile, obviously, to speak to you, mate. But just to hear that, in in many ways, and to like hear the bit of sort of sadness or regret in your voice is. You know, it's sad, but it's good at the same time. Um, because there's an element of me, I think, which was thinking, uh, as time ticked by as well, you know, uh, maybe, you know, it's, you get into this kind of thing in my mind where I'm thinking, well, they just don't want to call me, you know, or they don't want to speak to me. And then maybe you're thinking, I don't know if you're thinking the same. I, th I guess maybe not, maybe not to that point, but I, just, I do kind of wonder, you know, what, what would we talk about? Like, is, would it be easy to talk to you? I think the answer is yes, right? Like, we know each other. We know, so, from the age of whatever it was, 13, 12, 13. Yeah. The age of... Because we kept in touch pretty well for university, didn't we? Yeah, I'd say so. From the age of maybe 22. Yeah. We were really 10 years. Like, we know each other really well. Yeah. Um, I was saying this to Greg and... and Rick, the other week, like, you just pick up where you left off. It's like, well, someone's a good friend. Yeah, yes, it's terrible. We haven't really spoken for seven years, but... Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that's a positive. That's a you know, it's a really positive thing to hear. Actually, uh, I imagine you you still like the occasional beer. Um, yeah, when I get a chance, but yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. How how is it with? Uh, I mean, how has your life changed uh, with children? Um, it's just it, it changes everything, right? So they become the priority. Like, you can't be selfish in any way. You can't. Not that you can't go out, but obviously, spending time with your kids is more important than anything that you've done previously in life. So it's just completely different. And that the thing is, like, I've got three children now, and that's you you do that with the first right that's the big change is as soon as you have your first child and then afterwards it you kind of know what to expect from the others but yeah i mean it's hugely rewarding yeah but it's it's, it's hard work yeah it's, yeah i don't know I'm, I'm i'm a million million miles from that but i mean i mean was jen jen was your was jen your first serious girlfriend would you say uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Do you recall how that kind of changed things for you, getting a getting a girlfriend and then obviously eventually a wife? It didn't change a lot to begin with because um, she she moved the, the way we met. I don't know if I told you she lived in the house next door. Yeah. And then we had dinner or whatever. And we got on really well, and, and it just went from there. But she just became part of my group of friends. So like all of my uni friends, like she's just part of that group basically. So, in fact, she's better than I am at keeping in touch with university friends. So one of the reasons why I've been better at keeping in touch with my university friends and my school friends is because of her, because she's good at keeping in touch with them. So it's all with just one group of friends. Yeah. Maybe university is more formative in some year, in ways. I'm not sure. It's just it's because they're in more, in more the kind of recent past, it's perhaps a bit easier to keep in touch with them or for the spark to just be there when you go back and um, see them after a year or two. Or, but for yourself, it's obviously a little bit less in terms of time. Do you, do you think with um, do you think there's a difference in terms of people like Jason, Ed and myself compared to uni friends, the, the, the times you I spent think, together? Uh, so I think, uh, uh, yes, is the answer. I, for me, I think the reason is that it's the stage of life you're at when you meet those people. So... You know, at school, we used to hang out quite a bit, but it was literally like once a week we'd go and play football, right? And we were still living at home and we were still, you know, um, looked after by our parents and everything. But then when you go to university, you're just on your own device. Like, I have, this is probably the best years of my life, really, in terms of just leaving home and all the memories I have, just going out all the time, doing what I wanted when I wanted... Like, those friends at university, you know, Greg lived in the room next door to me. Like, we were spending whatever it is, like, some crazy amount of time, whatever it was, 60-70% of our time, basically, together. It's a, it's a different relationship to when you're at school. Because you're living with them as well, essentially. Yeah, I was living with a lot of those guys, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think you've, you've probably hit on something there, mate. Um, because, yeah, I suppose that is, it's the sheer amount of time that you're spending with these people you know, in, in a different context, you know, I've, I've never really, I suppose, thought about it like that, but it kind of does clarify some things for me. I mean, in part, part of this whole thing that we're doing here is, you know, me probably trying to understand, you know, friendships and things like that, That's uh, and people's lives, because, you know, it's been a number of years, it's not really until I've started doing this journalism thing recently, where I've kind of, I don't know, for want of a better phrase, found a bit of a calling, you know, in the sense that it's something I get a kick out of and enjoyment out of, um, so I've kind of spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, friends and how well they're doing and the nice houses there. And you can see, you know, we've got a rough idea. Basically, I'm in an annex on the side of um, a posh house in Compton, in Shawford, um, which I'm renting for the time being and sort of desperately trying to get out of. Um, yeah. You know, no, you know, working nine to five in the admissions office at the uni, which is, you know, an OK job. It's just, well keeps a roof over my head but when I look at yourself you know I mean you know <laughs> a nice bed there obviously and things like that I kind of like compare myself a lot to to other people you know or did for a long period um did, did you find in any way that you were comparing yourself or that you you think about people you went to school with or uni and how their life's going compared to yours um I don't know like I'm lucky so I'm lucky I, I work fucking hard right so I've, yeah I've yeah, it's hard. Do I compare myself? I try not to, right? So, if I think about my university friends, they're all in very different positions. There's, there's one, I don't want to give too much detail, but there's one who can't basically keep a job. He's out of work. He's living with his parents. He's just had twins. So, him and his wife are living with his parents. Neither of them are in work. With, and they've just had twins. And so, that's, that's like a really tough situation to be in. 
and we went up to see them. He lives in Liverpool. We went up to see them recently, and you try not to compare or like you know, talk about money or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure that everyone looks at me and probably thinks. I do, like they probably try and compare themselves to me and Jen and what we've got and the fact that we've, and uh, having kids is another thing, like we decided to have kids quite young, like so we're the youngest of any of our friends to have kids, my friends from university are just now, like in the last year or so, really starting to have kids, some of them really struggled as well, so I'm sure they compare themselves to me and think, you know, I managed to do all this or whatever, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I genuinely don't. I try not to look at any of that. But that's easy to say. I think when you've got, you know, when I've been lucky, I've, I've you know, we didn't have problems having kids. We managed to have them when we wanted. We both work hard. We money. I mean, it's expen- having kids is expensive. Right? I'm not saying that um, money's ne- never an issue, but it's like we've got enough to look after our kids and put food on the table and stuff. So. But it's, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a good question. Like, yeah, I try. I, I try not to compare myself, and I try not to look at you know what other people have or don't have. But it's probably a lot easier for me because I'm very lucky. I work really hard. I'm good at what I do. I'm, I'm lucky. Like I kind of found my calling fairly early on. I do a technical job that supports the, the account managers and sales guys to sell the software. Right. Like I'd much rather join and do a job that I like doing and get paid well less than. Than a job that's going to pay a lot of money that I fucking hate. I think I think that's quite sad in a way. Like if someone's doing a job for the money and hates what they're doing, I'd, I'd hate to be in that position. I, I couldn't be more satisfied. Like I, 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 I'm quite a decisive person. Like if I want to do something, I'll go after it or do it. Where did um, that um, sense of being able to do or uh, having a desire to go out of your comfort zone, mate? Where do you think that came from with yourself? I don't, I don't know, actually. I think I was lucky in a way in that the company I joined when I left university, I couldn't have asked to join a better company as a graduate. So I've done, you know, I've kept in touch with a lot of the guys I used to work with there. I went out to lunch with them a couple of weeks ago. And I was saying, like, the, the, so the company's called QIS. Yeah. And I was looking, because I've been looking for work. I've been looking at where they've all gone on to, and like they've done like really well. Like people have done really well that have gone through the QIS kind of um, graduate program and moved up into different roles. Like it was a really good company to work for. So I think that's probably where it started. Is I was lucky enough to join a company when I graduated that recognised talented people and put them into new jobs. And you know I've been on lots of different trainings, and one of the training I've been on is about performance under pressure. It's like the top people are willing to like go like just push themselves outside that comfort zone continuously because that's how you improve. Like just continually, continuously push yourself outside your comfort zone because then like what was outside your comfort zone previously becomes inside your comfort zone. So you have to push yourself even harder to to learn more and do more. Like the so the job I do in pre-sales, right? I I demo software, so I demo very complex software to sometimes rooms of 30 plus people and I'm demoing, I'm presenting, I'm at the front of the room, everyone's staring at me, like listening to what I'm saying, asking me difficult questions. I, I love it though, like it sounds crazy but like a lot of people hate presenting or hate being the centre of attention and I, I probably wouldn't have, I, I would, if you had asked me that question 10 years ago I'd be like no fucking way, like A, I'm not a salesperson, I hate sales, B, I don't like presenting. But, yeah. But, yeah. So it's part of being in that in that world, and that has enabled you to become the kind of person that you are now in terms of being able to stand in front of those people. Definitely, give, yeah, definitely, definitely, give, yeah, definitely giving me confidence.